Well, prepare yourself, guys. This is Chris with Talking Through the Medias, and this is another episode of We Got Your Mail. How do you send a question in to us? Well, I'm glad you didn't ask. Well, all you have to do is just follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Send us a question, a comment, anything you want us to talk about, and we will cover it right here on the show. And I got a couple of guests here to help me out with the questions today, so let's get right into it. Pretend that never happened. All right, so Bethany Regan... <laughs> I've been I've been butchering your name all day. How are you? It's your first time here on the show. Yes, yes. Popping my T three media is cherry. And sort of. Amy. <laughs> and Amy back again, ready to help us out. Guess who's back? Tell back a friend. Again? Was that yep. I was about to say, are we doing is this the slim shady thing again? All right, guys, let's <laughs> let's get started yeah, with doing it as a dramatic monologue. Oh, that's what that was. All right, let's get started with the first question of the day. And the first question comes to us from our friends over at MBE. That's and Movie Burner Entertainment. They asked, "Do you think that Avatar 2 or any of the other sequels will ever eclipse the original and or top the all-time box office grossing list?" Well, I personally don't think that Avatar 2 will. I just think it's been too many years since the original. It's, it's, I've, I know it's a bad thing to say, but I feel like mo more people have probably, uh, have, have probably passed or, or that, are, that were fans or hardcore uh, fans of that uh, movie than are gaining. So it's just, it's just been so long. But I personally don't think that it'll even get over, it'll make a billion. I don't think it'll get past 1.5 billion. It, will, it won't come nowhere near. Uh, the top grossing, but that's just how I feel about Avatar 2. What about you guys? Are you even even are you guys even still fans of that of that movie? Was anyone actually a fan of Avatar? Like I feel like absolutely it won't because no one no one like loved Avatar. Like everyone went and saw it because it was like the big 3D movie every everybody had to go see. But like as someone said, for as high, high you know how, as many records as it broke, it's like no one can quote Avatar. No one talks about Oh, it's like that character in Avatar. Right. So I, I'm going to say there's probably not going to be a big, uh, big desire to see what the the blue the blue people are up to. Like no one, no one's like, but are they? What did they do next? That's, mm -hmm. that's me at least. I don't know, Bethany. Are you are you an avid an avid Avatar <laughs> fan? I mean, I I loved um, Pocahontas in space, but. Um, <laughs> No, it was a really cool movie, though. Um, but I don't know. I think the interesting thing about that question is it said any of the sequels. And I'm wondering if it refers to any, because I feel like there have been sequels that have sold out their previous, their predecessors, but I don't think Avatar will. I mean, I'm well, I planning on doing that, like Star yeah. Wars has had sequels that outsold predecessors. But yeah, well, I like think it's because Cameron wants to do a ton of Avatar movies for some reason that nobody nobody's asking for the, right. the next but, one is the plot of a different disney movie <laughs> here's how but no but bethany you no know, you're right I, that what i've also said was will avatar 2 do better than the first no it's just the interest has been lost but if avatar 2 crushes it and does really good avatar 3 there's a chance for that there's more of a chance for avatar 3 or avatar 4 down the line but avatar 2 I would be shocked if it did. I'd, I'd bet money it's going to kind of flop. Unless unless they really step up and like knock it out of the park. Uh, I think I think the original Avatar was absolutely a fluke of like a time and a place where people were excited about 3D technology and, mm -hmm. and what we could do with CGI and stuff. And yeah. I, I don't think it actually has the staying power of, again, like a script or characters that people still remember and love. I think too, as far as profit goes, those are very expensive movies to make. Yeah. Um, and they're releasing it during a time when people are not going to want to go sit in the theater around a bunch of strangers. Well, it comes out in 2021, so it's we we don't know how it's going to be. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we don't know how anything's going to be. So, okay, with all the movie theaters closing, so I guess we'll we'll see. I guess the, let us know what you guys think on that. Do you think Avatar two will crush it and and Defeat Avatar One become the highest grossing movie of all time over over the original and then oh what, over Endgame I don't I, I don't think so but comment below put in the box below let us know what you guys think 
All right, so let's move on to the next question. I think I mean I feel Bethany, guilt for a role in it, but exactly. <laughs> Bethany, did you have okay, the, the next uh, question? Me, yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> this is from Dean Erasmus. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. On Facebook, I want to I want to preface this by these are Dean's opinions and not mine. Okay. How come the asshole character in series are always loved by fans? Barney from How I Met Your Mother, Schmidt from New Girl, and basically the entire cast of Friends, dot, 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 just to name a few. Collectively, they are the biggest assholes on TV, but are also the most popular. <laughs> I feel like someone needs some ice for that butt hurt. Um... <laughs> why, why are the... the... The assholes, I guess, always the most popular. What do you think? Well, I don't think those characters are all assholes. Like, for example, Schmidt uh, is a douchebag, but there is a difference between a douchebag and an asshole. That Hold on. I yeah, I need to unpack that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I feel like we're getting into the like, well, a geek's not a nerd. Like, yeah. it's all the no. same. It's all yeah. the fucking. Because an asshole is someone that like does shitty things. I uh, think. Yeah, literally. Am I allowed to swear on this? Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. no. But a, but a douchebag <laughs> is someone who dresses like a douchebag and is maybe annoying, but not necessarily doing a lot of shitty things. Right. I, I, so I, it's I, not I, like he's like running around like hurting people except like one episode like so but i think schmidt is the most popular character on that show because the guy's really talented and a lot of his stuff was them just letting max improv and he's a good improv improviser yeah. and uh as far as barney on how i met your mother he's kind of an asshole to women but the care but the the actor is very good actor so i feel like that's more like a talent thing at least on those two than anything like and that's, pro uh, you know, that's probably why we forgive it so much because we know it's probably not who they are in real life and and then we Unless it's, uh, Michelle. it's it, maybe it's, a, it's it's an escape we we're like i wish maybe i wish i could talk to people like that or be that confident i mean that the, the character is obviously written as an exaggeration or, or probably based on somebody that's real but we're probably like the reason why we love them or something or, or maybe the reason why they become the most popular is because we're like let I me mean, speak for myself i wish i could say that to somebody to their face someday but yeah maybe, and I would maybe argue that's me, it sorry oh i was just gonna say i would argue too all comedy characters are going to have like a big flaw because mm -hmm. you can't really laugh at someone until you can feel better than them like <laughs> and, and I would argue, like, calling the cast of Friends out is the, I mean, that's true. That's just, like, a rule of comedy. It's funnier yeah. if you can look at them and go, ha ha, I wouldn't do that. Right. That you, like, the, the subconscious permission to laugh at them. So if you're talking about the cast of Friends, it's like, well, it's not that they're all, like, I love that. It's just, like, the whole cast of Friends. Yeah, I wouldn't like, say that they're, they're all, all assholes. assholes. There's something they're about each one that's that. But it's was, like, someone needs ice for the, whatever butthurt they're having, like, because... The but you laugh at you know you laugh at Joey because you feel smarter than him. You laugh yeah. at Rachel because you're not spoiled like her. You laugh at Phoebe because she's like hippy dippy and like not quite on the same wavelength. That you know it's I think asshole. You know Barney's a womanizer. Right. Like yeah, I, that makes sense character. for asshole to me. And yeah. also, if your character is an asshole, they're usually pretty smartly written. Like to me, a character who's like an asshole but really popular. I'm watching a ton of Scrubs right now. It's like Doctor Cox. But he also gets some of the funniest jokes on that show. Right. So usually right. you can tell those are also, yeah, it's the, I wish I could say this. I wish I had a team of writers making me funny and not just mean. Yeah, no, I agree with yes. that. Then the, in the examples that he gave, these characters, usually all these people have hearts of gold. Even Barney, he's a womanizer, but on that show had a heart of gold, the most loyal of the most of, uh, of the rest of the cast. I mean, he would give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. I mean, he had a heart of gold. But he just happened to be a womanizer. But I mean, it's yeah. I guess it's, it's just give or take, I guess. That's why I think I mean, I think he's the only one who really falls under the category of asshole in that list of characters. Yeah. Like, but to me, Ross was an asshole because he just couldn't pronounce Unagi right. Unagi. I mean, come on. Ross was not an asshole. No, Ross is, <laughs> Ross is not garbage. An asshole is someone who's like a dick to people. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the way Ross, Ross always corrects people. We can all agree on that, right? Yeah, ha- has- no. Hashtag Ross is trash. No. <laughs> Wait, what? Hashtag Ross is trash. Oh, I, I just want to make it clear that this is a this is a, a strong anti-Ross space. I want to. <laughs> It's crazy. All right, guys. The question is, what do you guys think? This do do you think that assholes usually are the ones that are like the the funniest on the show, or or do we give too much attention to them? what do you what are your thoughts on just assholes in movies and in TV series in general? Put it in the box below. Let us know what you think, and let's move on to the next question. I think Amy, you got that queued up, right? All what right. We yes, we have JFS, the reviewer on Twitter. Thanks for sending it in. Asking if you had the chance to redo any failed movie which had the potential to be a success. Which would it be and how would you have made it a success? Uh, so for me, I feel like I'm always such a, I'm such a theater nerd with these answers. Like anytime it's like, if you could have your dream, I'm like, well, here's a play I really enjoy. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if that makes me a geek or a nerd. I forget the difference. But uh, the Rock of Ages movie is garbage. Uh, as they say in the industry, I do not care for that. Apologies if people here love oh, it. But was that a Jack Black movie? No. What um, movie am I thinking about? Thinking of School of Rock, which is great. School of Rock. Uh, it's so it's based on a jukebox, a Broadway jukebox musical that's like a bunch of '80s, like '80s hair metal songs. Mm-hmm. And the musicals, like, I, I went in, I saw the the show live, and I was like, this is going to be so dumb, and it's so fun. Like, it's stupid, but it's one of those like. We totally get that this is silly. We get that this is over the top. We get that this is like a wild idea and we're gonna just have fun with it. And like, you're mm. in for the ride. Mm. So I was so excited when they did a movie and it had a pretty stellar cast. Uh, I think Julianne Huff from Dancing with, with from the Stars was in it. Uh, Russell Brand, Alec Baldwin, like good Tom Cruise randomly. But so many people in that movie were really oh, I remember this movie now, I do. I, never saw I forget the director's name, but they did not capture the comedy of it. Like it took itself too seriously. So I think if you could redo that and and get a, the two leads needed to be funnier and take themselves less seriously and a director who understood like, this is goofy, this is mm. dumb. This is like a music video with fart jokes and that's what we're making. And I, I think, I think that had the potential to be such a fun movie. And I was so like one of those, like halfway through in the theater, just be like that moment of acceptance. Mm -hmm. Like I went through like all the stages of grief and finally was just like, this is not going to be good. (laughs) (laughs) It was so sad. So if I could, if I could fix it, I would. Well, I guess keeping on, on the same, uh, on the theme of like, just being a, like a a total, like a movie geek and whatnot, the, the movie, I guess I would pick would be, uh, Ava, the, the last airbender avatar. I'm not going to be totally mm. the opposite of what, of, of what I'm not going to, I'm not even going to pretend like, uh, I'm going to choose a, a classy or, or kind of a movie. No, I'm going to go straight like comic book cartoon movie no, that okay. should have, that should have been great, but just, uh, it just failed in a lot of different ways. I think one of the main reasons that it failed with, with, with M9, M night Shyamalan, when he decided to make each, um, tribe or i guess each group of people he he separated them uh, by race which was very weird and it uh, was a very weird choice he made the fire nation the uh like muslim or arabic background and he made the the this tribe uh, this group of uh, race and i i guess i got what he was going for but it it at the time it just made people feel like like dude what are you doing the, the optics of that weren't weren't that great uh, so I would want a redo of that because I just got through watching that cartoon uh, on Nickelodeon, mm-hmm. the original cartoon that's on Netflix right now. And yeah. when I when you get to the second season of that, there's a character uh, called the Boulder. And if you're a wrestling fan, you know that the Boulder, the way he talks, the way he acts, he's he's based on the Rock's old wrestling persona back when he was wrestling. The, he refers to himself in the third person. The Boulder is here to crush his enemies. And, and you know that if there was a sequel to the Avatar, that means the Rock probably would have played the Boulder. So yeah. I'm mad about that. I, if I had a redo, I'd, I'd want uh, that movie to, to be redone. What about, what about you, Bethany? What movie would you, that failed, would you want a second chance at i don't specifically have like a specific movie but kind of going along with what amy was saying 
Um, I have this pet peeve in Hollywood where when they take name actors and put them in musicals and they're not necessarily musically trained mm. or like mm. dance trained, um, drives me nuts because there's people who train their entire lives to develop that skill who are doing it on Broadway, who are auditioning for these films, but they're not names. And so then it'll be like, oh yeah, they auto-tuned their voice and it ended up sounding okay. Let's celebrate that. They tried to work really hard to learn to do that in a month. And it's like, no, like it just drives me bananas. I feel and like so we're talking about the movie all Cats. The musicals where that has happened and put actually trained singers in it. <laughs> I could make a list of things that upset me in Cats, and the vocal stylings of the actors yeah. wouldn't crack top 20. Uh, I don't Number know one how... is not enough buttholes. Release yeah, the buttholes. I was, I, was, I, was, I was trying to beat you this to it. This thing is anti-Ross, pro butthole. Okay, pro, yeah, pro, yeah. take. You, you'll, you'll see very fast, Bethany, that we are pro uh, anti-Ross, pro cat buttholes, and we also do not uh, Wait, dig... Cat. Where's your cat's butthole? Oh well, she's. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I could. I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, but she's I'm in like, the other room. So into cat buttholes. Where? No, I want to see those CGI the, cat buttholes. That's, uh, that's Let's be specific, guys. Last time, last <laughs> time. Uh, Neville Wilson, what are we doing? The last time me and Bethany streamed, uh, the the cat uh, that I have here now was mean, jumping on her. Oh no, when we video called. Yeah, when we video called. Yeah. Your parrot kitty. I have a par yeah, I have a parrot cat now, but but no, she's not she's not in the room with me now. I thought it would be better just to leave her in the other room, with no food. <laughs> I'm sorry. But let us know what you guys think about that. Which which movie would you want a second chance at? Uh, put it in the box below. Let us know what you guys think, and I will move us along to the next question that came in from Twitter at Coco Femi on Twitter as. Why do some people always assume newer movies are always better? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. I assume it's probably a technology thing. It's a generational thing. My kids, uh, for example, it's like pulling teeth to try to get them to watch anything that's 2D animated because they're so used to 3D animation. It's like, what? The, this isn't a cartoon or this, the, the graphics, I guess, um, I guess with the with the way they are now with 4K with HD and things like that, you watch something from the 60s or the 80s or whatnot. The animation in comparison, um, I for myself, I before I really became a fan of movies and film, I had a bias on any movie that was older than me, except for The Wizard of Oz. That was the oldest movie I would I could ever tolerate. But anything past before I was born, I wasn't gonna watch. So I don't know. It's probably a, I guess it's a graphics thing for for me. But what about you guys? Why do you why do you think it's uh, some people believe that newer is better? So, speaking of how I met your mother, Barney Simpson said newer is always better. Why is that? Why do people think that? I feel like I see the opposite. Me too. Problem. You think the opposite? Yeah, I, I get that from your face. I'm like, I feel like we're having the same thought of like, I feel like I encounter more people who have a hard time admitting that you know there's going to be some great stuff some lousy stuff on any given year but there is stuff being made right now that's like going to go down at some of the best movies of all time mm -hmm. and i i feel like i encounter more people who do get a little stuck in the like well and even just with like remakes and you know but like almost i can't think of the word i'm like, like taking the old one not that they're not great like i rewatched i rewatched the old star wars and it's like look i'm not saying the new ones are better i'm just saying people talk about these like they're gospel like they're the bible and it's oh, like no, it good. is referred to as the holy because trilogy they are. um <laughs> no, they're great but i do think people build things up in their head right. and especially if you grow up on something i think yeah. people get super like no this is untouchable this is perfect yeah. this is the best movie ever made and it's like well some of that's nostalgia some of that's exactly you know having the hindsight to look at it and analyze it for years and years and years part of it seeing how it's affected other movies so that's what i see more than people going I only like movies from, you know, 2010 and later. But that's just my, Granted, my circle. Maybe, maybe I know I snobby people. I don't know. Hmm? Hmm? Maybe I just know snobby people. Yeah, I know a lot of people are really in the Criterion collection. So. Amy and I live in an area with a lot of, like, film hipsters and snobs. Yeah, that's probably it. Oh, really. Angela. Really. So, 
it's um release the hitch i I was thinking the whole time i was like i most people like the originals better i personally am not good with change so i'm always like another remake put a new script up Everybody always assumes that that everything is getting remade and redone. It's well, it's because those movies tend to uh, to do better financially. But there's well, a lot of original good. movies that just aren't getting yep. uh, getting uh, getting viewed. But they they get made a lot. But people they don't support. I don't know why they don't support independent film I as as that. much. Go for it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. It's been a little like pandemic in the film world ever since the writer strikes. Mm. Um the the ones that we had about a decade ago yeah people don't want to take chances on new writers or new scripts and Mm. the studios are so worried about money 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 and losing money that they only want to make things they already know will make money so that's why they make so many remakes and sequels because they're like this will already make money yeah the fan base is already baked in yeah yeah let's make it makes sense but yeah it's all financial well, yeah, well, Coco, we have, there you go. We figured it out. That's why. Thanks for the question again. <laughs> let us know what you guys think. Put it in the box below and, and uh, let us know your thoughts on that. So let's move on to the, if my computer will work for me, let's move on to the next question. Amy, I think All you have. Right. So we have uh, Dean Erasmus again on Facebook asking, uh, so I just checked out Hereditary on Netflix and uh, I'm not really sure what I just watched. What are your thoughts? I'm going to be honest. I haven't seen it. I'm scared to see it. Maybe Ooh. someday, daytime, on my phone, so it's little. You got, you got to see it. Be- Be- Bethany, please tell me you've seen this movie. Make it, make it small. What is it? Heredi- Hereditary. Hereditary. What Have is not. it? It's, a, it's okay. Okay, I'll take it from take here. As, this as is the, a Chris question. Take Chris it away. As the, as the guy, the only person on the panel who has seen this movie just a month or two ago, um, Tony Collette. Oh, yeah. Tony Collette is in this movie. It's a horror star, Tony Collette, where it's, it's, I'm not going to even go near what, what it's about, but I just remember people, I, I, I mean, everybody kept talking about it. It was the one of the scariest movies of all time, the scariest thing mm-hmm. I ever saw. I, I won't give it that much, but there is a scene or two in there that I haven't like gasped, like literally like, <gasps> what did I just oh, watch? So it's a horror movie. It's it, it is a horror film. Yes, it is. It I is a horror. It. It's a horror film, not I'll a movie. It's a it. but it's it, it it years. It's been years since I've gasped that loud before, and um, I had to rewind it. Like, did I just see what I just thought I saw? And I, I got to say that in the end of the movie, it it didn't affect me as much as it affected a lot of people. But throughout the the beginning, middle, towards the end, it, it messes with your head. It it. It's, freaky it's everything that people hyped it up to be and it, it's worth it so yeah what what the hell did i just watch is is exactly the reaction that i had like what did i just put myself through uh, it's not like there's like blood or anything everywhere or anything like that's not like, like a jump scare kind of a thing it's right. just it, it, it messes it messes with you it's it's yeah. it's so creepy but uh, i recommend it but yeah yeah um yeah, Dean, I'm with you there. So hopefully I can get these two to, ch- to check that out. And then you guys got to let me know what you thought about it if you catch up to it. Come on, Amy. Watch the movie. And like, Chris, I haven't slept in a week. Oh, you won't. <laughs> I, I guarantee you. Like, what the hell is that? And you're, like, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be thinking what's going on in the house uh, a lot. So, yeah, watch it on the small screen if, you, if, you, if you're kind of scared. If you're, if you're too scurry, just watch it on the small screen for the phone won't hurt you you'll be, you'll be fine all right well let us know what you guys think about that and let's move on to the next question i think uh bethany you got the next the next one i believe don't you yes this is from jfs the reviewer on twitter do you think with the success of bad boys 3 that it gives hope to sequels slash remakes coming out this year of old films will be a success that's a long run-on sentence um bill and ted face the music Candyman, the witches top gun maverick and coming to america i think coming to america is going to be a success um yeah uh i don't i don't think think that it's I, i don't think it's just with the because of the success for bad boys 3 because these those movies were coming out whether oh yeah you know, bad boys 3 was going to come out yeah i do think certain ones are going to be a success anyway i think like coming to america will be an exce- a success for a lot of reasons mm-hmm. i agree for I th- one the first one um, and then 
candy for man. A second, mm-hmm. The second reason is because the generation who so enjoyed the first one and then their kids who watched it on Comedy Central a lot and all that other stuff are going to be like, let's take our kids to it or go to it ourselves. Like there's going to be bringing in an audience with it already. Oh, yeah. So I agree with that. I think people, I think it's going to just, honestly, I think it's just going to be so dependent on reviews. Like, I feel like with people are so wary of remakes at this point, even if it's something they like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think people have got a little burnt out on the remake train. And I think there's a definite, like, cautious optimism. That's, that's a good them. point. That, going, that's a good question. Do you, love, do you think that's yeah, what's going on? Do you think I, that people are getting burnt out on the remakes? Well, this is mostly sequels. Well, I think they're waiting to see because, uh, you know, but it's like, okay, well, if coming to, you know, if, if they do a sequel or a remake to Coming to America and it mm-hmm. sucks, mm-hmm. people are just going to be upset. It's like, why'd you touch this, you know, really classic movie that really didn't need to be messed my with? Classic. So oh, I, my God. I think yeah. it's such a, but it's like such a gamble at this point of like, if you get the reviews and it's like, no, it lives up to, to what you loved, you know, yeah. previously, then people will, of course, rush out to see them. But if if the reviews pretty quickly are like, it's not as good, people are just going to be like, now nah, forget. The name recognition doesn't get you as far as it used to. I think Ghostbusters burned. But like people people were too mad about like the Ghostbusters movie and stuff. So that's a, everybody's that, like. That's a good point. I, I think out of... Uh, everybody's if, married. Just based on those examples, I think the one movie that has uh, the, the, the tallest hill to climb would be Bill and Ted face the music. I think the other Candyman being, if you keep the budget low uh, and yeah. because of the horror, now that horror is kind of uh, uh, making some, some good movies lately, I think that's uh, could be an okay territory. The witches also same thing. Tom Cruise has is, is been crushing it in almost everything he's been doing lately. And coming to America, I think Eddie Murphy is, uh, is having a, a, a pretty good buzz of a comeback, especially since he did the um, Dolomite. Uh, movie that was such uh, so well received. So, I think face the music. If out of all those, I think face the music is the one that, even though Keanu is the man, like I, everybody loves him. I think I don't know. I think that one's gonna be the that's the what, but that's the one I'm the most excited about seeing. But let us know what you guys are, are, are think about that. With do you think remakes and sequels are having a are, are, a harder time uh, nowadays, or do you think this is it? This is the time for for sequels, and this this is uh, the, these movies are all. We'll crush it. Let us know what you guys think. Put in the uh, box below and share your thoughts on that. And let's move to the next question. I think it's for uh, Amy. We have Dean Erasmus on, on Facebook asking, what annoying mistakes do people constantly make in movies that you always notice? I'll let you guys start. Interesting. Just... I mean, there's a lot. Uh-oh. I, uh, the driving always bothers me. When I'm doing this on straight road, someone's gonna gift that, and I'm scared. Uh, <laughs> uh, the one, and it's not—I guess mistake is not quite the right word, but this bothers me every time when there is a love scene in a movie, and uh, I don't know why I'm doing, two consented adults are making love, mm-hmm. and they get up and like. But like she's got the bra on, like it, like they're but like it's very clearly like you can tell the actress was just like I'm not taking my top, and I'm not saying you have to take your top off in a movie. Like, yeah, you could work the angles around that of the camera. As an adult woman, I've just never been like mm, I'm gonna leave my bra on for that. I will say I knew, and I've never been with someone who was like I don't really need any of this out. <laughs> not interested it happens all the time and it really bothers me because no one's ever been like mm, breasts no thank you <laughs> <laughs> mm, not for me mm. what, what about you bethany what's what's the pet peeves that get that get on your nerves opposite like i prefer when it's not <laughs> less titties less titties i prefer less titties like i just watched the in, in movies the other day and um, I get low key angry when I see like so many titties in in one sure. episode, and it's just because I mean I'm sure you've experienced this too, Amy. Like it, as a female in Hollywood, but especially before the Me Too movement, 
um, it was almost impossible to get a role if you weren't willing to show skin or uh, casting couch situations. So I, I just, as a young woman. No, I keep was, asking. <laughs> <laughs> As the young woman who, who's, who's, yeah, I actually keep asking to take my top off for movies, and they're like, "If you could not, that be." Well, I think this is a family. Is a bra on. Like, this is oh, a family God. film, Amy. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's something well, that really spices it up. No, I agree. No, it is. It is frustrating to feel like, oh, how many actresses? And like I said, I don't disrespect the choice of that actress didn't want to be topless. No, yeah. I just feel like you could edit around it, but just the like, and here's my bra that I've left on the entire night and like s made made love in, and then slept in my bra with my under. It's like pull the sheet up, you know, have her get up with the sheet. Like I get it. It, but for me, the like you're not wearing a bra with underwire on all night that's just i guess but for that's me not sometimes correct. if it's like not serving a plot i'm just like why are yeah. there this many titties um and and i feel like that for very personal reasons just because i had such a hard time mm. breaking into the industry because i wasn't willing to and even to this day if yeah. you look at my uh anyone who's watching there's like a size card that they have that, that uh, so when your headshot and resume is sent out, your size chart is sent out. So they'll see, I'll submit to the roles that do not require nudity. Mm. And then they'll see it and be like, would you be interested in this role though? Because they'll see the double D and be like, we want those, uh, what naked, those? you know? And so, and so, and I'm like, if I were comfortable with that, would have submitted to it. Uh, and so I just, I've lost roles because I, they decided that they wanted to see more skin than I, yeah. they had said previously. So it's just like, it's a pet peeve of mine when I see too much. I, I, I'm in a, I guess I'm in a, <laughs> a weird situation now because you guys have, have, have uh, started off on, on, a, on a very important topic. And I'm all like, I hate it when I see the boom mic on the top of the, sc uh, the screen and then, and no, uh, the little pet it. peeves like that. <laughs> like I like those it. little mistakes. I, 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 don't, I don't like bad edits. I, I hate it. I hate it when the, the uh, there's or having dinner and then the cup is half and then the second it comes back to them, it's full and then it's half again. It's full again. Well, oh, I, I, I hate editing it. mistakes. That's those are my, my pet brother peeves. And I yeah. will watch movies all day and well, we don't watch movies all day, but all day long we'll be going. Somebody needs to get in touch with their continuity person. Like this yeah. is terrible, but we love it. <laughs> but I, uh, but I, but I guess to be fair, I guess uh, if I was to uh, just to keep on the theme of nudity, is that that there's not enough ding dong? I guess to be shown. Come on, we we got feelings too. We want to show. Maybe we want to show. More butthole, more ding dong, <laughs> more butthole. And then being asked, "Why would you be comfortable showing your ding dong?" I feel like, like I feel I feel like guys don't get asked that like, question a lot. Hey Bethany. Bethany, don't go in casting rooms and ask them if they want to show their ding dong. <laughs> Just don't. Don't do what, that. You, yeah, you would you would think that would be a good way to uh, to make them uncomfortable, but they that they would that would probably open a Pandora's box on it. And like, oh my goodness, oh good. Well, I guess the question is, guys, what what oh movie God, mistakes? Wait, super. <laughs> <laughs> super unrelated when you're not from LA and you move to LA there's things you need to get used to like the fact that strangers don't go oh hi to each other the way they do in other places and I did that you know just to be polite to a stranger and he whipped his dick out so he was willing to show ding dong okay you can continue that, 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 that is that that counts as a movie mistake <laughs> just on the street of Hollywood <laughs> well let us know what you guys think Sorry, about that but... <laughs> and, sh and share your uh your favorite movie mistakes and <laughs> let's go on to the next uh let me let me try to race to the next question because uh, i'm like yeah 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 I went down over here. and just in case on youtube <laughs> he writes uh seth rogan okay so he, this is somebody who who commented on my Seth Rogen uh, Instagram reaction a video. It says, Seth Rogen is a joke, just like the characters he plays. He's so full of himself. Sure, he's vocal with the movement, but really, where was he before any of this? Nowhere. Why? Because uh, he didn't care. Uh, he's acting self-righteous to make a political statement, and it's sickening. 
I appreciate this question because he answered it for us, right? Like he just mansplained it for our channel. He goes, where was Seth Rogen before the movement? Nowhere. And why? I mean, bec because he doesn't care. Like, how do you know what, what Seth believes or does or what he was doing or what he would have done before this? I just feel like this, for this person is like triggered for no apparent reason. And I, I why just- Why were you part of the movement before the movement happened? It, yeah, you know, exactly. What, what, that's the, what, was, what was Taylor Swift before she got famous and was, was being very political and stuff? What, what was her views? Like, who cares what her views were? Uh, I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't the Taylor Swift that we know, you know now. You, you didn't, no one cared. She wasn't famous back then. So you didn't care about her political beliefs. But now that she's famous, it's, it, when she makes a statement, it, it has gravity. That's, that's the truth about everybody. You don't know any... A, a stranger is just a friend you haven't met yet. You didn't know Seth's uh, beliefs until he shared it with you. So, okay, now you know, and knowing this after battle, I just say get over it. All I have to say is this. if you're looking at everything going on in the world right now, all the shit in the news, all the injustice that's happening, mm -hmm. and you believe that Seth Rogen telling some assholes to go fuck themselves is, is sickening. The <laughs> Yeah, I think you need to, to pay a little fucking attention and yeah. find your fucking humanity, dude. Yeah, exactly. Go watch the... That's all I have to say. Back to the joke time. Back to that position. Was, 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 when I did that, was that too much? <laughs> did I violate? You know, stuff like that. Oh, I don't think that's ever happened to me. I don't think Good. any guy that yeah. I've been with have, has ever recapped. They'd be like, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs>